Hooray! Data Science Nigeria marks five years of transformational impact. It has been 157,680,000 seconds of running an award-winning and high-impact artificial intelligence learning, research, solution delivery, consulting, and AI startup incubation network. Let us celebrate some of ESN's major milestones. Over 500,000 learners have benefited from the DSN's free online and offline training sessions in artificial intelligence, data science, and digital skill-related classes. The organization runs the most expansive network of AI learning delivery in Africa, with 41 physical learning communities in cities and on campuses. It also organizes annual Pan-Nigeria AI introductory classes across multiple cities through its AI Invasion project. It currently has an online learners network in 49 countries across the world. Data Science Nigeria, through its founder, Bayo Adekombi, published the first AI book for kids in Africa. The book uses cartoon-like characters to demystify and simplify the basic concepts of AI and Python programming. The book is currently being distributed through a nationwide Train the Teachers program to ensure that every child has the foundational knowledge required to competitively prepare for the fourth industrial revolution and the future of work. The annual DSN All Expense Paid Bootcamp has become the numero uno of AI learning in Africa. It brings together some of the best global experts who visit Nigeria physically or connect virtually to teach and mentor young African talents. Each AI bootcamp starts with thousands of participants, with only 400 best participants making it to this intensive learning session. The 2021 edition had learners from over 20 countries. Today, DSN has become the biggest talent recruitment pipeline to leading organizations in Nigeria, providing access to top talents who have been trained through DSN's intensive, hands-on and industry-ready training modules. DSN has also validated its technical capability in the areas of consulting and solution delivery. It has successfully delivered over six million US dollars worth of professional service for leading global multinationals and development agencies like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, World Bank, Mastercard Foundation, Chevron Nigeria, AI Commons, KPMG, Access Bank, and so many others. DSN remains very strong in artificial intelligence research, with over 13 academic papers published and accepted at peer-reviewed conferences. The inspiring works of DSN have been showcased at all the world's leading AI conferences. From NeurIPS to ICML to ICLR to Deep Learning in DABA. DSN's work in AI for Social Good was a case study of excellence at the foremost conference of the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence held in New York, USA in 2020, where the founder of DSN spoke as a keynote speaker. DSN AI Lab in Lagos is generously supported with the research robots from the Computer Science Department of the University College London complemented with a world-class research workstation donated by NVIDIA. DSN is proud to have won the academic poster at the 21st edition of the ACM Conference on Economics and Computation, EC20, the world's premier conference on the interface of economics and computer science, organized by the Association for Computing Machinery, United States. DSN also won the Best Runner-Up Poster Award at the Deep in Daba in 2019, Africa's foremost AI conference, where the effort of Data Science Nigeria was also recognized with the prestigious Wangari Mathai Impact Award. DSN's work has been acknowledged across the world as a best practice in talent building, indigenous application of AI, community development at scale, early education in AI, and AI for social good. Its work has been reviewed and referenced by the World Economic Forum, UNESCO Science Reports 2020, UNICEF Reports, African Union, Data.org, and many others. DSN was
the only African finalist at the XPRIZE Algorithm for COVID Prediction Competition. DSN was also part of the National COVID Intervention Team on the use of advanced epidemiological machine learning algorithms to flatten the curve. DSN runs a startup incubation center dedicated to artificial intelligence with a current cohort of 12 startups at its new center in Yaba, Lagos, Nigeria. DSN has transited from the generic theory of AI into practical solution development with a focus on how to apply AI at scale in emerging markets. During the COVID-19 lockdown, which created a major learning disruption to many students in Nigeria, DSN invented an adaptive artificial intelligence learning algorithm, which was leveraged to deliver effective and interactive learning through basic SMS feature phones on 2G network, and interactive radio platforms. This effort helped many learners who have no access to the internet or smartphones. Over 8 million learners benefited from this intervention through the funding support of the MasterCard Foundation. DSN has been a revolution with many firsts of its kinds, like the AI Summer School for Kids Inter-University Machine Learning Competition, AI hackathons for top organizations, data scientists on demand, AI tutors on demand for primary and secondary schools, AI knowledge box of 20,000 learning videos, free AI for beginners free ebook, and its current effort to set up AI libraries at all the top Nigerian universities. As DSN marks its fifth anniversary, it is making some big, bold transition under its five perfect transition mandate to re-strategize for the future. The organization is recalibrating its vision and mission with focus on enabling 1 million AI talents in Africa and building AI solutions that will enhance the quality of lives and well-being of people living in emerging markets. It is a double-fold impact transition. Let us reflect on these big five shifts. Number one, DSN is transiting into a global operation beyond Nigeria under the DSN brand name, that is Data Scientist Network, with an existing learners network in almost 50 nations. DSN has become a global knowledge delivery network for the world. All its local and global extensions will now answer the DSN brand name. Number two, DSN will run a dual business model as a social enterprise with DSN Foundation Nonprofit and DSN AI Innovations Limited, both in Nigeria and in the United Kingdom. This effort will position DSN for sustainability. Number three, DSN is also changing its consulting model by becoming a distributed talent company. It will run a globally diverse network of expert consultants and partner companies who will collaboratively work with DSN full-time in-house staff to deliver world-class solutions under its new partnership program. Number 4. DSN is launching its learning network with more frequent online masterclasses, project walkthrough sessions, hands-on expert research sessions, and mentoring. These will be facilitated by some of the world's best experts. This expanded learning will also include dedicated programs for professionals, kids, researchers, and developers. Number 5. DSN AI Innovation will be unveiling Spot On, its geospatial AI precision analytics solution for retail and fintech, and ULearn, its AI-powered augmented learning platform that activates learning for every child. DSN is currently building more high-impact products in health, financial inclusion, agriculture, and others. It is a new season at Data Scientist Network, DSN. As DSN unveils its new logo to reflect its global positioning and expansion beyond Nigeria, the organization remains very committed to delivering high-impact AI solutions across the world while expanding its free training and research network across many countries. Welcome to the future with DSN, powering 1 million AI talents and delivering transformational AI solutions for 2 billion people in emerging markets. The 5th DSN anniversary.
this and be transformed into the way Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. For those joining online, good morning. Uh, please confirm if you can hear me. Please confirm if you can hear me for those online. So, uh, welcome to Business Analysis Class uh, on track. As so as everyone here, for those online, those um, here physically, it's good to have everyone here. And trust me, we are going to have an amazing time going forward with this class. Oh, okay. So, we have our facilitator here, the person of Chief Hockey, to be leading this section. We are starting with SQL. For those, I believe everyone has gone through the web page. Excel, sorry. So much like SQL. So, uh, we, I, I believe that everybody has gone through the web page. Uh, I've seen the tracks, I've seen the courses rather that we'll be taking. So, it's a step by step course. And uh, please, and as much as possible, uh, let me just. Uh, See some classrooms. Um, you will need to fill in the attendance. You need to fill in attendance. Attendance will be shared in the chat room. You will also be displayed for you to find in the attendance. And then uh, you need to do all assignments. And uh, the caps uh, capstone project is very important. So uh, we are then over to Q. Okay, good morning. So, good morning, everyone. And those online, please confirm you can hear me. Right. Uh, 
Um, okay, yes, thank you. So, um, welcome everyone to this training. So, my name is Esos Chinoke, a data scientist. So, for today's training, we'll be looking at Excel. Um, so, um, Okay, let's see, um, let's start with what we will learn. Without wasting time, let's do what we will learn. So, I will see how to explore data in Excel, right? So, data exploration in Excel, that's the first thing we will learn. So, this is the two days class today and tomorrow. We do what we do today, and tomorrow we continue to cover on everything. So the second one will be um, diving into the um, data preparation in Excel, right? And the last one is analyzing data in Excel. Okay. Now um, let's go in. So um, you know that these days Excel people tend to underrate Excel, especially when it comes to you know, data analysis class. We are going to go and do Python. We are going to go and do Power BI, Tableau. And we don't pay much emphasis on Excel. But Excel is a very powerful tool for data analysis. I mean, it can make your work easier for you. There are some things you will need to do. Those basic things. You really don't need to be writing Python code to achieve that. Something you can easily and quickly, you know, assess on a go in Excel and it gives you the insights you want. But Unfortunately, people don't even remember Excel, but it takes a widely used data analytics tool and it's really, really awesome. So, um, let's look at some Excel tools and functions for data analysis. Excel has great tools and functions that helps data analysis. So, we'll see this. Um, has anybody heard about analysis tool pack in Excel? Yeah, so there's a function in Excel called an analysis tool pack, and you won't believe what this tool can do. So it is an Excel adding that can be used to perform exploratory, descriptive, statistical data analysis. So you know, to you don't need to, in essence, when you have just quick insights to derive. You don't need to spend much time writing code to do that when you can easily do it in Excel. So we'll see how to use analysis tool pack in this class. So pivot tables. I know that most of us must have heard about pivot tables. Pivot tables is so cool. Pivot table is an Excel function, Excel tool that helps you to, you know, drive insights on the go. Just click, you drag, you drop, and it's giving you the information that you want to see. So we'll be looking at pivot table too. Pivot charts. So pivot charts is a representation of pivot table. So that your pivot table. Come, you know, you know, um, visualization is everything. They say, uh, picture speaks louder than words. So that your data that is in pivot table. If you put it in a chart, people understand it better and more. So we we'll see how to use pivot charts too. A lookup. So a lookup is a function for um, looking up values. Let's say you have a series of tables you are working with, and you want to, let's say, just is a function for, let me say, merging and appending data. Let me call it another, another, let me use another English for it. When you are trying to merge data or trying to join data from different tables, or you're not joining the entire table, you're looking for a particular column in a table that you want to import into another table. So, Bilko can help you and achieve that. We also have conditional formatting. Conditional formatting helps, especially in when you are exploring your data. Conditional formatting is very handy here because it can help you to find, if you have duplicate values in your data, it can help you to show your duplicate values, show you where the duplicate values are, remove them if you want to remove them. So conditional formatting is another good one. And the last one, gates and transform data. So I think people know this more as um, Power Query. Editor. 
So there's also a Power Query Editor in Excel. You know, when you, when you say Power Query Editor, most people go to Power BI. But well, there is a Power Query Editor in Excel, which is awesome. It can do whatever uh, Power BI Query Editor can do, except in different things. Um, let me say the amount of data it can handle. Or is a Power Query Editor, just that in Excel, it is called Get and Transform Data. So, yeah. There are plenty of them. I just highlighted this one. There are so many, you guys know that there are so many formulas, there are so many functions in Excel, which you will use, see how to use today. So don't just look at this one. These are just tools. There are functions we'll be seeing how they work today and how you can use them to just basic things. Analyze the data. Right? Okay, so but before we go on, let's go see data analysis process. You don't just get data and you start running up and down with your data or you start working on your data. Everything has steps. And I think we might know this, but it's also important to like treat that all the time. So let's see when you are trying to analyze what is the first thing you even do? Business questions. So you are doing analysis. Analysis is all about answering questions. No matter the kind of analysis you are doing, or whether you are doing um, um, prescriptive analysis, you are doing descriptive analysis, you are doing predictive analysis, it all boils down to the fact that you are answering questions. So what kind of question are you answering? That depends on who am I working with? What do they do? What do they want? What does their data say? What do they want to see from this data? It's very, very important because if you get the business question, I tell you, the rest of the process will be easier for you. You know, when you're analyzing data, analyzing data can come in two ways. Someone can give you data and tell you, I want to see this, I want to see that. I want to give me the average of this, give me the number of this. It's easy for you. You already know what you want to do, right? They've already given you the direction of what and what to analyze. So it's very, very easy. You dive in, you just flex and start analyzing. Or what's in the case that they just give, and this is the most scenario, they just give you data and say, find insights in that data. The best thing to do to even ease your tax is to understand what that data is about, what the business, the owner of the data, what do they do? Because the data has to speak to what they do, of course. So business question is very, very important. The second one is then, okay, now, I've understood what you do, understand how everything works, okay, give me your data, right? You get the data, the data could be their database, it could be in a server somewhere, it could be in Excel, CSV, it boils down that you get the data, right? So the next one is now, you explore that data. Data exploration. So look at the data, understand the data, what is the distribution, how many columns do I have, how many rows do I have, do I have plenty nodes, how do I handle my nodes, uh, how do I remove the nodes, you know. So when you're doing all these things, you're exploring your data, it makes you understand the data very well. And when you understand your data very well, your work is also easier. Okay. So, um, then you prepare the data. Of course, we all we know that at this, that eighty percent of the time you are preparing data. Of course, you have to be if you if you are working with unprepared data, you are giving yourself headache because you still go back to that and clean that data. You still go back to that data. So preparation of data is very very important. It might not be something big. It might be a very big task. At the point, depending on the kind of data you are working, but the fact is that data must be cleaned up. No matter less if they okay, they clean that data and they just give it to you. Um, lucky you. Okay, so the next one is now you analyze your data. Because you have cleaned the data, the next thing is to start playing around with that data. Dr. Bio will always use that at the you touch your data the data tells you what you want to hear. So you analyze your data, you, you know ask questions, try to answer them in a very easy and understandable way. It's very, very, that word is key. Easy, easy way. Don't be, if you know what they want, give it to them. Most times when we are building dashboards or analyzing data, they are meant for executives. 
These people don't have time. They don't have time to sit down for a long time and be listening to you. Give them what they want to say. This is what they want. If it's one thing, present that one. If it's three, present it in an easy way that when you are not there, they understand what you did. So it's very, very important. That part is very important. Then, of course, you present the data, right? So I think these are the six process of data, right? Six process that you must go through when trying to work with your data. Okay, so um, for this class, I'm arguing that, okay, I don't know the data for, the data for the class, how to, okay, okay. All right, so, um, so for this class, we assume that we you know our business questions, we have gotten our data, the data for the class will be sent across. Yeah, that's, so we're going to start with exploring data in Excel. How does it even work in Excel? Okay, so data exploration in Excel. Now, to explore our data in Excel, we'll be using the Excel Analysis Tool Pack. So, the Excel Analysis Tool Pack is a tool, an Excel tool, an Excel added for data analysis. So, in case uh, most of the time it might not be activated in your own Excel, so for you to use this tool pack, you need to activate it. So, uh, so to activate the analysis tool pack, uh, go to your file. So you open an Excel. So you open your Excel. I think uh, um, so I'm going to do this. So you go to options. You go to add-ins. So these are the steps. You will navigate to Excel add-ins. And uh, you pick the analysis tool pack. So um, check if you have, how to know if you have the analysis tool pack activated is when you open your Excel, go to data, in the menu, go to data, when you open your data, look at the end, if you see data analysis, it means your analysis tool pack is activated, or if it's not, you need, you need to activate it following these steps, yeah, you need to activate it following these steps, so I'm going to just want to be showing this slide before I go and do my two. So you go to buy, click on options, click on addings. So then now you will see manage and so addings. Just click on the go. To open that door. So, I like the don't don't see the things out there is something that you so don't worry. You just need to highlight the analysis to pack. Then click on go. So once you do that, if you go to your data, you will see that the data uh, the data the data analysis here. You will see that added so added for you. So those that are just coming in, welcome. We are trying to look at exploration. How do you explore data in Excel? Please, do they have the data? I need to confirm that before I can move on. Because we are moving on to like them. I'm going to I'm doing the same process here. So five options, add-ins, all right, I click on go, and I pick this one, so here, and I okay it. Okay, I see, so you should see this. 
Please, those online, Okay, um, I hope you're going to see my screen uh, online. No? Okay. I'm looking at the chart. The screen is blank. We're not seeing what you're doing. No data for us yet. Okay, sorry, the data is there. You can't see the Excel. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to, yeah, yeah, I'm stopping and I uh, will share again. So, yeah. Okay, sorry. Sorry, we're trying to Um, so please, how can I get the Excel package and I don't think I'm the analysis to pack. What about the data? What about people in the class? Please, I'm waiting for that. Okay, yeah, so data will be dropped soon. They are dropping the link to the data right now, so you can have access to data because we are moving to live demo. Okay. So I hope you all you have your um to pack, you should have this, when you open your Excel from your data, you should have this data analysis part here, because that's your to pack.
Okay, so you can try, um, there is um, a free, or uh, well, it, it lasts for a while, version of Office uh, 365, it's called E36. Yeah, okay, it shows analyzed data, yes, yeah. Okay, I think the data just means um, try to pick up the data and download. So we can continue. All right. So this is what the data looks like. So please, um, Lydia, you need to go and activate the data analysis tool pack by following this step. I'm going to project it right now. So. Please follow this step to activate the data analysis to pack. I hope you can see my screen. Please drop the data again. Drop it again. Okay, yeah, so use this step and activate the two pack Uh, we need to move. All right, so I'm to go back to this. So, so these um customer sales data, just a random customer sales data. But so we want to just explore this data. So we're going to assume that this is data you have. So whatever principle you apply to this data can be applied to any data you are actually working on. So we have um you know, so number one tips number one um tips i like to use when i'm analyzing with excel is i make sure that my data is a table you know um we might have data in excel that does not mean that data is a table right you need to make your data a table when you're when you're analyzing tables data as a table it makes things easier like I can, if I have this now, so if you know, if you want to know if your data is a table, you will have all these drop down buttons here. So if you have all these drop down in your column names, it means it's a table. If it's not a table, it will not have all these drop down. So let's assume, let me, let me um, change this to non-table and convert it back to table. So um, we'll see. extra columns I don't need okay so so I'm trying to highlight all my tables at once what do I do so these are different just you know, small tips that helps you navigate very fast in this especially when you're working with very large table you can't keep scrolling that's taking time so I'm just trying to highlight all my tables at once I can do control A to do that. Okay, so now after doing the control A, um sorry, I need to move up. And uh, I'm going to format table.
So, um, as I said before, when you see this drop down, it means your data is a table. If you are not seeing that when you're working with data and it's not a table, all you need to do is just highlight that table and insert table. Right? Once you insert table, if your table has header, mark that your table has header and OK it, it will make that data a table. Right? So, this one is already a table. That's why we are not doing that. I'm going to cancel. So, because it's already a table. The second navigation tip, the second one is what if I want to be jumping around? Maybe now I'm in this particular cell. I want to go to the last cell in my table. I want to go to the last cell. That's last column in my table. All you need to do, wherever you are from your table, Control and use your arrow key to move. Just control and press your right. Somebody please mute. Yeah, okay. So whatever you are on the table, use your control and your arrow key to move. So control and I move. You can see I'm taking it to the last one. If I want to go to the um the last data row wise. What I do, the same thing, control and the down key. It takes me to my last data down. If I want to move up, it's the same thing, control and up key, I come back home. So that way, you don't need to be scrolling a lot. You just move to where you want to be. Of course, we know we want to find something from your table. You bring out your control F and you find something you want. Maybe I'm looking for. Nigeria, and then I type Nigeria, okay, like that, and I say find all. So it takes me to, you can see we have Nigeria here, it takes me to anywhere Nigeria is in my table. So I did control F to bring out this box. Control F to bring out this box. So these are small navigation tips in Excel, all right? So how about maybe I want to go to a particular cell. I know the cell I want to go to. I can do Control G, all right? And you put the cell you want to go to. Maybe I want to go to B22. Okay, it takes me to B22. Same as B22 down here. So I did Control G, and then you put so all these things like this slide. When you get this slide, you see all these shortcuts. So Control G. And then I put the cell number I want to go to, and it takes me there. So these are small um, navigation tips in Excel that makes you move very fast. Now, okay, so the essence why we're here is that maybe you want to explore this data, right? You want to explore this data. What kind of exploratory analysis can we do? We can decide to do a descriptive analysis. So we know all what descriptive analysis describing my data. I want to know the mean, median, mode, what is the um what is the um variance, what is the standard deviation. I want to find some things, you know, just give me insight of what my data is. So the one is that descriptive analysis can be only carried out on a numeric data set, right? Because we are finding me median and mood. You can't do that on a string or a text or a character. It can only be done on a numeric data set. Please, any questions? Any questions, let me know. Oh, the tutor is too fast. Sorry. Uh, okay, I'm going to reverse back a bit. I'm going to reverse. Okay, I'm going to reverse back. Okay, so please, um, do you have your data? For the people online, if you have your data, please drop a yes. I'm looking at the chat box. Drop a yes. I'm going back now. So please don't be lost. I'm going to carry you along. Um, no, those that are no, please, the data set is somewhere. Please, can you drop the data again? The data set is somewhere on this chart. Please locate it and download. 
so you can share the same place with us. If they will drop the data right now again. So please, once it drops, the data has dropped. The data is still dropping. Please download. Okay. Now, when you get your data, I was talking about developing your data. You will see this data up here. Then, I was talking about different navigation tips in Excel. Just more small things that make you navigate through your table in Excel. And the first one I said is, when you're analyzing data in Excel, it is very, very advisable to make it a table, right? You might have, you know, they say that Excel has columns and rows, but that does not mean that your Excel, your data is a table. How do I know that my data is a table? You must, if your data is table, you will have this small drop down box here. If your data is not a table, you will not have this box. Okay, you will have this small drop down box here, right? That is what tells you that your data is a table. So whenever you're working with a data in Excel and you don't have this drop down box, what you need to do is convert it to a table. How do you do that? How do you do that? Highlight your table, go to insert, and you will see table. Okay. So let me just uh, open another, yeah, let me say I have this sheet and I have data. Page, please don't mind what I'm typing. I just want to show something. 12, 56. So this is data, this is data in Excel, but this is not a table. It's not an Excel table. So 43 and 88. So I have data right here. Is in Excel, but it's not an Excel table. And with experience, I know that work analyzing data at this table is makes work easier for you. Now, I want to convert this to a table. Okay, I want to convert this to a table. What do I just do? Highlight it. I like everything. Go to insert. Let me go to. I'm going to insert now. Pick this table. I pick table. So make sure if your first row is your header, make sure you are marking this. So it will pick your first row as your header. So if you don't mark this, it's going to read your first row as ordinary value. But if your first is the header, like mine, this is my header. So I'm going to mark this. And I say, OK. You can see now the drop down box is here. All right? So the drop down box is here. Please, are you following? I'm looking at the chat. Please say yes. Oh, thank you. Awesome. If you are not, you tell me no. Please come back. Okay, no problem. So what did I do? I said it's better to analyze your data at the table. And what I did is to just create. So I'm going to change this table back to normal one. What do I do again? Highlight this table, right? Go to table design, come back to range, okay? Highlight the table, go to table design, convert it to range. If I pick it now, yeah, do you want to convert the table to a normal range? Yes, I pick yes. If you look now, the drop down is gone. So my table is normal and in Excel now. All right, so please, I'm taking it back to the table. Follow along. What do I do? We highlight the entire table and we go to insert. We pick table. Okay, if your first row is your header, please mark it. Okay. All right, so please, I just repeated the step. I hope you followed that. Yes, yes, yes. All right, thank you. So that is how you convert your range table to a, an Excel table. 
Okay, so going back to our main data, which is already a table, right? You can see it's already a table. Now, the next thing I talked about is different and easy navigation tips you use in Excel, especially for movements, because if you're working with very long table that has like uh, 360 something columns, you can't be scrolling. That's time consuming, right? So how do you navigate easy? For easy navigation, your control key is your best friend. Your control and your arrow keys. On your laptop, you have a control key. You have four arrow keys, left, right, up, and down. Those are your plug for easy navigation. So I'm in my cell A1, right? I'm in my cell A1 now. I don't even know, I can't even remember what the last cell I have. But I want to get there. Right? What do I just do? Whatever, whether you're able to sell A1 or D5, wherever you are, all you need to do is press your control key and press your um, right arrow, yeah, right arrow button to move. So, control button. And see now, I'm now in the last one. If you look here, so this is my last one. I just moved without having to scroll. If I want to go down, I want to get to the last um, cell I have, row-wise, the same thing. Control and click your down button. And it takes me to the last one, right? So please, for navigation, control and arrow key is your block, right? So that was another thing we talked about. Okay, so um, after talking, okay, after talking about navigation key, we talked about finding, how do you easily find data? Control F can help you to find your data and Control G. When you bring out Control F, this box will come out. This is for finding things. You can type what you want to find and it will take you there, just like we did for Nigeria. It's taking us to Nigeria. So the next one I talked is Control G. So Control G will help you go to a particular cell all you need to do is put the cell value. Maybe I want to go to F, I hope I have F. I want to go to F56, uh, okay? And you see, it takes me to F56. So, okay, this is covering the F56. Oh, it's, it, I'm there. If you look, I'm in F here, and I'm in 56 down here. So this is just covering it from saying it. But Control L, Control G helps you to move. Okay, so without, I want us to cover. The next thing I said, okay, that let's try and do an exploratory analysis. Let's explore our data. Please follow along. This is the important part. So please follow. All right. So to explore our data, what kind of exploratory analysis can you do? You can do descriptive analysis is descriptive analysis when you are describing your data you are exploring that data you can even do testing people remember our t-test our nova testing those are, those are statistical tests you can do too you can do like statistical probability tests you can want to know the probability of this and this will match right those are what we call t-testing ANOVA testing p-class testing right so you can do that you can even decide to find correlation. If you can decide to do correlation, let's let me correlate these two columns. Are they even correlated or not? So this helps you to know your data very well. Now let's say we want to describe data, right? Okay, let's find what first of all I say if you want to do descriptive analysis, it has to be a numeric column. But before we move, there's another tip I remember, and that's data alignment. So most I know some people will know, most of us will not know. So the way your data is aligned in Excel also tells you the data type of that data. Unless if you now change it. But when you bring in data into Excel initially, Excel will align it based on the data type it's detected. So when your data is aligned to the um, right, like this one now, is a text. Hmm? So, because if you look at these, they are on the right. Is a text. Now look at this one. 
This one, so this is my left, right? <laughs> okay. I hope I know what I'm saying, right and left. So when your data is on the left, like this, is a numeric or is a date value. So Excel will arrange a date like that or numeric values like that. What am I saying is, you know, sometimes when you're working in Excel, if you don't look up here, you might not know what the data type is. So I easily spot to make sure that I have correct data type this way. This is the easy way I try to spot my data type. You can see this one, this is decimal, right? You can see it's on the left. Another one is when it's on the center. Center is likely to be a logical boolean, true or false. Excel will take it to the center automatically. You can change it to whatever you want, but Excel will align it down, right? So, for example, now, if you look at this column now, this is decimal, or is on the right. It means that this particular is a decimal, or is on the right. It means that Excel is seeing this column as a text, which means when you are cleaning your data, you need to format that column and make it a decimal or whole number or the path the, the real data type is supposed to carry. You get so these are small small Excel tips that helps you you know spot things on the go. You can see our things is on the left. So yeah and you can see all these ones they are on the right they are text. So please numeric dates left um text right boolean center so once you look at your data and you see that the alignment is not okay just realign or change data type to balance it right so let's just go and explore our data so i want to do for example a descriptive analysis on this product quantity for example right i want to describe let me even see what is going on on product quantity so i want to know the um what my product quantity is talking about so that is where our analysis tool pack comes in i'm going to go to data open the analysis tool pack please follow along yeah so um please follow along so when you open the analysis tool pack can you see just scroll down, you will see different things you can do here, right? You will see different things. You see ANOVA, ANOVA is for statistical testing, different kind of ANOVAs you can do. You see coloration, you see covariance, you see descriptive analysis, which is the one we want to do, restrictive statistic. You see exponential smoothing, t-test, histogram even if you want to detect outlier easily you can use your histogram and just you know put your data in the histogram and see what it looks like right so um all those regression you can perform regression here right so for descriptive analysis now you want to do a descriptive analysis all you need to do is click on descriptive analysis please follow along and press ok I'm going to close and start again. What did I do? I did not highlight any code. Anymore. I did not go anywhere. I just went straight to data analysis. I just went straight there. So if you have activated your back, you will have this data analysis. Okay? Yeah. yeah. It's not there. What version of Excel are you using? Okay. Well, I know that from 2016 and up, must have it, but I really don't know about 2010. I'll get back to get back to you, right? So so um i just went to data analysis right and i'm going to pick descriptive statistics and i just okay so it's going to ask you for questions number one is input range input range is 
what is the what is the range of what am I describing? Descriptive statistics, what am I describing? So all you need to do is click on this small arrow here. It will take you to your Excel. If I click on this small arrow, so I want to describe this column that's product quantity sold. I will just you know highlight the entire column by just clicking on it, right? Yeah. Let me move this so you can see very well. Do I need to go back? Okay, no, no, right? Okay, yes, please, yes. Okay, please pay attention. I'm going to do it one more time. I just went to this place, data analysis. Please, if you do not join at the beginning of this class, when we did this adding, when we added this, you might be confused. Please, uh, you need to activate this for you to use it so just click on it it will show you different things you can do from there we are trying to do a descriptive statistics describe a data right we click on descriptive statistics and say okay so it will bring out this box the box that will ask you different questions all right what is my input range it has made it very easy all you need to do is click this small arrow close to the input range box which will take you back to your excel workbook now i want we want to describe this particular column called product quantity sold all i need to do is highlight that column everything once i've highlighted it see this more you see you can see when you highlight it it's going to pick it here see it here so it has picked out that column you highlighted and you just okay it by clicking here. You see? All right. So the next one is output range. Where do you want it to output the result? Do you want it to go to a new worksheet or do you want it to, you know, output the result in the present worksheet you are in? Okay, let's click on the present one. I'll click on the present one. All I need to do is click that small button again, go and pick anywhere, anywhere you have space. On your present worksheet, all right, and then give me the summary statistics. I want to see the summary statistics. Okay, so remember what we did is you can even mark all these things. Give me the confidence level. Give me the k largest. Give me the k smallest. Whatever you think you want to see in that data, mark it from here. All right, and then I will okay. Okay, input range contains non numeric data. Okay, so let's go back and see. Uh, okay, let me let me leave the column. I'm going to start from so I'm going to highlight from two that cell two down. All I need to do is click on that first cell two, control shift, and move down to highlight the entire cell. Okay, and all right, I'll change it and I'll say okay now. All right, um, question is okay, let me see how to activate two pack in Excel. Oh, okay, okay, uh, which is uh, somebody's putting up your hands? Can you type down your question and I'll see it, please? Thank you. All right. So, um, right now, see our results. Now, so this particular column now we just described, right? See the mean, you see the standard error, you see the median, the mode, the standard division, the variance, everything. So, so this is the smallest, the highest, the sum. So the count it means we have 4,999 rows of data, right? So and this is the sum of that data. This is the maximum minimum. So, you know, and this is the range, like the range of 55. What does it tell you? In a nutshell, you have seen the statistics of your data. 
in, in a nutshell, you have seen the statistics of your data, which is really, really awesome, right? So in this way, you know, okay, do I have skill data? Okay, you can see, it's telling you see the skillness. You are now understanding the parts your data is skewing towards this skewing to the right or to the left, or is it normal? Okay, so this is a bit normal because uh, it's almost 0 0.5. So, but this is just to show how you can do a simple descriptive statistics on your data from Excel, right? Okay, so what about, let me say, want to do correlation. It's the same process. You want to do correlation between two columns. I want to know, for example, I want to know what is the correlation between uh, what, what, what should we choose now? Product weight and um, uh, let me see. Maybe this is product weight and okay. So right now our product shelf visibility is not a numeric data, so we cannot even. So let's look for another. Let's say product weight and uh, maybe the price of it. Does it mean, is there a correlation between when the product is heavier, the price is higher, it has more price, right? So let's see the correlation between product weight and uh, I think we have, yeah, price. Oh, so we also need, before we do anything on our price, we need to clean the data, which we'll be going into very, very soon. Okay, let's see correlation between uh, quantity sold to and the uh, supermarket sales correlation so just to you know find the correlation between two data sets or two columns what do we need to do still go back to your data analysis tool pack so everything you need to do is inside here now go back to the analysis tool pack pick correlation right so pick correlation so i want to know if something are they even correlated at all so I pick and I said, okay, of course, a box will come out. Okay, a box is going to come out to put the input range, right? So, um, so let's say our input range is, okay, these two. Okay, so sorry, I did not click. I'll click here so that I can select. So what I'm just going to do, control, press down to highlight the entire, the two, and say, okay, all right. Output range, I want my results. Uh, where do I want my results? I want my results. Uh, okay, output range. And so I always, I always forget to click that small arrow to be warning me that I need to do something, right? Maybe so I want my results just up here. I pick that place as my output range. Now I'm going to repeat the process, right? And I just say, okay. You can see it brings out the results. So you can see column one, which is our product sold. Of course, correlating myself to myself would be one. Because I'm correlating myself with myself, of course, we are going to match. Then we'll be one. Then, if you now see column two to column one, 8.9, which is almost zero, sorry, 0 0.89, which is almost 0 0.9. So it's high correlation, which means there's a very huge correlation between these two tables, these two columns, right? Of course, this one to itself is one. You guys remember? When correlation is going towards one, it's highly correlated. But when it's going towards negative, there's no correlation, right? So you can see we have just did a correlation. We have seen how concerning this is. So within clicks, right? We have seen how the data could, and you can apply this at any level, right? You can apply this at any level. So another thing you can do is duplicate. You can check for duplicates in your data. 
Yeah, thank you. You can check for duplicates. So let me say um, this particular column. I want to know if there are duplicates here that I'll be interested in, right? So this one, to see if there are duplicates here. It says, um, I didn't get how you are selecting the columns. Okay. Let's go back. Remember, that's why I talked about control keys and arrow keys. They are very, very important. Control keys and arrow keys. They help you select your data easily. So how am I selecting the data? Please listen for the person that asked the question. Okay, so, um, so, um, okay, there's a question, Excel isn't writing the name of the column. Yes, so, remember we've not done data cleaning, we are just exploring the data. So when we are doing data cleaning, some data types are going to be changed, right? So normally it's supposed to even display the column, but I'm not selecting the column header. Right. Okay, don't worry. Let me show you how to display the column. In fact, let's redo all this now. Let's say I'm doing. Let me let me do the correlation again, or let me do um. Let me do. Okay, let's do a t test. Let's do a statistical t test. So how do I do that? Of course, I'll go back to my data analysis again. Okay, when I get back to my data analysis. I'm going to pick T test, pair this one. So what is T test? T test, remember T test is a statistical testing that tells you what is the probability of this and this can happen given this. So that is what T test is. What is the probability of this and this can happen given this? So now T test has a benchmark of 0 0.05. If your results, something they call P value, the they call p-value. So if your p-value is greater than, is far greater than 0 0.05, it's likely it's not happening. If it's less, it's likely that it's happening based on the condition you are giving to it. That's the test. Now let me say, okay, what is the probability that when I have larger quantity so I'm making more money? Just a question. So now in our data, we have product quantity sold and we have price, right? What is the probability that when I'm selling more products, I'm making more money? I said, okay, let me do, let me run a t-test on this question and say, okay, is it even possible or is not possible, right? So what I need to do is I go back to my data analysis. I'm still exploring my data. I get back to my data analysis. I pick a t-test. There are so many t-tests you can do. But most times, this is one of me using means. Yeah, that's your average. So based on my average, that's like based on my average quantity sold, and based on the average amount I have made. Can you? What the question is based on the average quantity I've sold, based on the average amount I've made. Can you compare these two and tell me the probability that I'm making more or losing more? Okay, so that is just interpreting that question. So I'm going, I'm going to pick, let's go again, data analysis, remember, I'm picking t-test, pair two samples for means. I pick this one, I say, okay, of course, our input table is going to come in. Now, pick the first one. Somebody asks, how am I picking my data? So I'll go back. Okay, I'm here. Please always keep when you when you come to where you're supposed to put in range, click this small arrow. This small arrow is gonna bring you to your Excel so that you can click where you want to go to or where you want to analyze. So let's say we want to do products. So my first range is products. I highlight the entire product sale. You can see L has been picked. I say okay. Pick the second one you are comparing it with. I click here to go back. Okay, I want to compare it with products. This one, just, I want to compare it with this one. 
and I say, okay. Another thing is, I'm going to enable my labels. I think that's what I've been doing since. I've not been enabling my label. And that's why we're having column one, column two. He's not picking the exact column header. Okay? That's why he's not picking the exact column header because I've not been enabling this label. So this means that my first row is my header. So now, where would my out? You can see, so this is our normal um, testing range, 0 0.05. It's already there for you. If you want to change it, that's fine. If there is something you want to compare it to, maybe there's a mean you want to compare with, you can put in that mean here. But let's just leave it the way it is. Now, our output range, let me say, um, display it here. Display the results here. Okay, I pick there and then I say okay. So let's allow it to calculate and give us our result. Okay, you can see now we have results out. So for the person that asks me, so you can see that I picked my column headers now. So it's telling me which is for which. So this is for my product sold and this is for the other one. Now, these are the means of each of this column. Now, our results, look at, to, 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 um, to interpret the results, we'll be looking at these ones down here, because this is what is giving you your results. So, you can see the correlation. Remember when we did correlation, see the correlation results here, is still tying with what we have here, right? And then this one is the results. So, just clicking, you do just simple, easy analysis. So, please, you can go back and if you are, in fact, not even if you're interested, if you are doing machine learning, you have to know statistical testing. So, if you've not heard of statistical testing before, please go back and research about statistics testing. We have the ANOVA testing, we have the T test, we have the um, T square testing. We have the, um, yeah, please go back, we research about them, know what they, are, um, what they entail, how to interpret them, and what is telling you, okay? It's very, very important. So this is just a simple T-test that we just did on our data right now, okay? So any question? <laughs> Okay, enable labels, noted man, yeah, yes. So I enable the labels, and that's why you're seeing the labels right now. Okay. So um, before I move back, I wanted to just show how do we, you know, even know if we have duplicate, of course we're going to have duplicate. Oh, it wasn't, but most of the time we have duplicates. So to, let me say, this is male, female. Of course, okay, let me use male, what would I use? What would I use? Okay, let me use this customer occupation. Let me know whether we have duplicates inside this customer occupation. Or do I have unique people with different occupations buying from me every day? So what do I do? So just highlight this column, customer op uh, occupation, then go to your conditional formatting. Okay, so summary. Summary of exploratory, we are not on summary. Exploratory data analysis in Excel. Excel analysis tool pack is your block. There are a lot you can do from there, right? Excel analysis tool pack is your block. Um, research on, because most times, of course, you know that data is about statistics. So most times the result they will interpret for you is statistical results. They are very easy to interpret as far as you understand what you say. Okay, all right. So now let's see how to find duplicates in our data because as this data is now, I don't know if I have duplicates or not. So I can easily just visualize it. Let me call it visualize. So what I need to do is go to that column, go to your conditional formatting, click it down, go to highlight cell rules, right. And pick duplicate. So there are something things you can do here. You can decide to do give me something greater than something. You can do less than between equal to. So this is like a if statement. 
if this is this, do this for me. That is why it's conditional formatting and formatting things based on conditions, right? Well, this time around, I want you to give me duplicate values. Give me duplicate values. So I'm going to pick duplicate values. So it's going to tell you duplicate with, you know, uh, if I see duplicate, fill it with uh, light red. It's just, it's just going to color it. So we are going to go with any color it provides. I'll say, okay. So because everything is red, though, it means that, okay, see this one. So pharmaceutical does not have any duplicates here. Okay, means that all these ones, you can see entrepreneur repeated. So just, uh, so at one glance, okay, um, security and investment act is not having any duplicates. So it's coloring the ones that have duplicates and the ones that doesn't for you to just see at a go. Okay, so with that, you know that, okay, this is the duplicate I have and this is the duplicate I don't have. We are really running against time, but trying to cover. Okay. okay. All right. Let's move on. So, and that is, uh, you know, just exploring data. Of course, now from this morning we have did now, we know we have 490 rows of data. We each column, I can decide to check uh, the mean of my columns, the mode, the deviation, and all that from this. So I really want us to go brief down into quickly into data cleaning. Okay. We want us to go quickly into we don't have time. This is a uh, I want us to do it very quick. So when we come tomorrow, we move straight into analyzing data. So um yeah. So data cleaning, of course, we know is a very important.